for federal prosecutor himself, Shan Liu, and former Republican congressman and Clinton impeachment manager Bob Barr, who's also a former federal prosecutor. Shan, if I could begin with you, what, what is the legal standard for an illegal order? Is there one? Mm -hmm. I, is this up to the judgment of uniformed mm -hmm. commanders? There's not really going to be a legal standard that's relevant to them because they're going to be in the field, they're making these decisions on the fly. I mean, there could be something that seems, again, it's going to be their discretion. If they're ordered to do something that they feel is illegal in terms of military regulations or other law, they're going to have to make that call at the time. He wasn't in a situation, Vindman, where he had to make an instant judgment. He was able to go to a superior, which is exactly why uh, Kelly's saying he did the right thing to do. He didn't have to make a judgment on the fly. Mm. Uh, Bob Barr, to you. You have uh, criticized the impeachment of the president. You've called it a Democratic sham. But John Kelly is hardly a Democrat. And he is backing with these comments the very foundation of the impeachment. Do you disagree with his take? Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me what uh, the general is saying because Vinmoon was not given an order to do anything. Uh, by all uh, accounts, he simply overheard a conversation so, and then he so interprets Bob, it a drop, certain way. I would way. just jump in there with the context for people who haven't read the entirety of Kelly's comments. The, the idea is if you are, a, you know, a lieutenant colonel, if this is your position and you hear something that you know is wrong, it is right. your duty to report it. That's what he's saying. Report it through the chain well, of command. He, 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 he overheard the president who is the commander in chief and who is in fact in charge of U.S. foreign policy on a conversation with a foreign leader talking about U.S. policy with regard to that country. The colonel apparently interpreted what the president was saying one way, others interpreted another way. I see nothing in this equation that equates to an illegal order. Guys, it's, Shin, it's not just sorry, Alexander John, Vindman, go ahead. Not just Alexander Vindman who interpreted it that way. Yep. Gordon Sunlin, the president's appointee, mm -hmm. uh, uh, interpreted that way. Bill Taylor, the president's choice to be envoy to Ukraine, also interpreted that way. There's no misunderstanding what happened here. And in fact, at the end of the Senate trial, we know that Ted Cruz told White House lawyers, we all know there was a quid pro quo here. The only question being whether it's enough to uh, convict and uh, boot right. him out of office. Uh, but the facts of the case and the fact that it was an improper uh, uh, association link that the president made between those two things is universally accepted now. No, it's Shan, not universally does it make a accepted difference? now. Yes, it uh, is. It's, it's not. I mean, I, d I disagree with what you're saying, and an awful lot of U.S. senators did also, and I suspect that if there had been a fair proceeding not in the House to impeachment Cruz. hearings, there would have been a lot of other witnesses that interpreted it very differently. Shen, you heard Bob Barr there talk about how the president's the commander-in-chief does that negate a uniformed officer for, from making a judgment to say, listen, no, to me, to me, uh, this sounds like a legal order, order, and therefore I will report it through the chain of command? Yeah, it absolutely does not do that. I mean, the commander in chief is simply a higher commander. So if he were, let's say, in the field in a war zone and his immediate supervisor gave him an order that he felt was illegal, something wrong to do, we want our armed services soldiers to not do that, to, to follow their training and to follow their own moral conscience. And that's what he was doing here. He did exactly the right thing. That's what General Kelly's saying. We should be proud of what he did. Bob, quick response, and then we're going to move on. There was no order of any sort. This was a president talking about a U.S. foreign policy with regard to another leader that can be interpreted and characterized many different ways. Well, that's exactly to. the point. I mean, you, you want them to interpret it and to, to fall back on the technicality there wasn't an order to do this. That, that's just silly. Obviously, he felt he was witnessing something wrong. Yeah. And we should note that th there, there was an order issue. We saw that in, in the email traffic. The White mm -hmm. House mm -hmm. directed this aid to, to be stopped. But please stay with us. Uh, there's much more to cover this morning. There is, because there could be more exits from the Justice Department. This comes just days after four federal prosecutors just completely up and quit the Roger Stone case over the agency's decision to overrule their sentencing recommendation. New sources, new sources uh, saying this morning that several federal prosecutors have discussed resigning, joining in these resignations in recent days. He is Laura Janet Jarrett joins us now. Uh, so we've already seen four. Uh, resign from this case. Okay. One, I believe, from from, from the, the job DNA itself, completely, from, yeah. from, from completely. You're, you're hearing that there are others who are considering the same move. 
Just imagine trying to do your job every day and you've been there throughout multiple administrations mm -hmm. and you find out on Fox News that now it's going to be reversed. For what reason? We don't know exactly what happened in those conversations, but we've seen this play out now in a way that I think undermines how they're supposed to do their job. And it's, a, it's really a morale issue. We, we talked to sources and things were really heated on Tuesday. We'll see how it plays out in the days to come. Maybe things calm down. And it's not unusual for there to be policy disagreements. I think that that's, sure. that's happens. But in criminal cases, those usually don't get touched. And what we're seeing now in Stone and in other cases is different. Um, how much of this, Laura, you're reporting in terms of the turmoil and the angst and the actual, you know, uh, leaving of positions or, or cases, at least, that the Justice Department has to do with the Attorney General himself? Well, look, there's no question. Uh, Bill Barr, if anything, takes a hands-on approach to these cases. And it turns out that Stone's case is not an outlier. The reporting shows that it's also in the case of the former National Security Advisor, Michael Flynn. We saw some court filings that were sort of discordant, if you will, on the sort of softening of the sentencing. And it turns out that he was involved um, in some of those discussions behind the scenes. But there's also so many more cases to go that are in the queue right mm -hmm. now that are politically sensitive, that the president cares about. Look at, I mean, just that map right there shows you what we're facing in the weeks and months to come. So many, we can barely fit it on one page there. And so, for instance, on Eric Prince, Betsy DeVos's brother, if they don't indict him for lying to Congress, how are people supposed to look at this? I think that's the question for the Justice Department. How do people look at this and say it was on the up and up? And so I think the appearance of impropriety, even if we're giving them the benefit of the doubt and that there's nothing wrong yeah. here, it's the appearance that some people well, aren't getting a yeah. fair shake. It's why you have rules against conflicts of interest, right? Because it, you know, if you have those conflicts, you should not be involved. Bob, I wonder how you respond to that. The president has an interest in all these cases. Uh, they're folks who advised him. Roger Stone has been one of his, his most loyal advisors through the years. Do you have any, sh any issue? You're a former federal prosecutor as well. Imagine if a president interfered in a case that you prosecuted to the best of your ability and said, no, I don't care what you did. Uh, this guy's a friend of mine. Ain't going to happen. How would you respond to that? There, there's something important to keep in mind here. While federal prosecutors have a great deal of flexibility in how they handle their cases, it is not absolute. And particularly with regard to cases involving public figures and corruption involving public figures, the U.S. attorney or the line attorneys prosecuting the case are required by the U.S. attorney's manual to coordinate that case with main justice and in fact what happened here apparently is there was some disagreement between main justice and the attorneys handling the case there was an understanding that they would follow the guidelines and then they filed a paper with the court that did something very Not different. the question I asked. I mean, I asked if you would have any issue with the president repeatedly intervening in cases in which he has a personal interest as a former federal prosecutor yourself. The president is not intervening in anything. The decision here, first and foremost, is going to be made by the judge, not by the line attorney, not by uh, William Barr. It's going to be made by the judge. The, the president can say whatever he wants. That's not going to influence the okay. judge. All right, I would just note, Bob, in your, in your piece in the Daily Caller, you criticized the judge as an Obama-appointed judge and took aim at all of this, saying Stone was never charged with any substantive criminal offenses, and you're talking about five counts of lying to Congress, witness tampering, and obstructing a proceeding. Shan Wu, you've been in meetings like this when you were former counsel to AG Janet Reno. I mean, did you see anything like this happen? Uh, absolutely not. There's a very solid wall between the White House generally uh, and the Justice Department precisely for the reason of the integrity of the process, not wanting public confidence to be undermined. In fact, the sort of interesting thing is usually when defense counsel are making appeals to the higher-ups at the Justice Department, main justice, usually they have very little success if they're going against the judgment of the operational people, the trial folks who have actually worked the case. The higher up you go, the less inclined the officials are to overrule the people at the bottom. So the idea here that this is a normal situation, I mean, that's, it's not. It's very abnormal. Well, we're watching it unfold. Uh, Shan Wu, Bob Barr, thanks to both of you. Laura sure. Jarrett as well. Still to come, Attorney General Bill Barr will face lawmakers on the Hill weeks from now.